Okay, Suleiman, I think this is uh, not Professor, this is Nuhu uh, uh, that is talking in response. So I think this is not Professor. I think uh, uh, that correction should be made. Um, um, with regards to uh, party alignment, uh, I think it's uh, something that is expected as a uh, result of uh, um, the issues going on in the country down memory lane. If you look at history, once there's dissatisfaction, either uh, maybe political disenfranchisement for some people or uh, maybe the political party is not meeting up to the expectations of the people, you know, uh, there's bound to be such kind of uh, political alignments and realignments, uh, you know, over, over the years in Nigeria, in Africa, in, in history. So um, I, I really don't think um, uh, it's really a problem. But uh, in a party that uh, is like APC, where the party is uh, filled with warlords, uh, I call it, um, uh, where you have the, you know, you have the Tinubu faction, the Atiku faction, the uh, uh, Bukala Saraki faction, the President's faction, you know, there's bound to be such kind of challenges uh, when there is no proper uh, um, uh, system in place to ensure that people are inclusive, you know, in the political process. So I think it's uh, the level of dissatisfaction that is causing the political alignments and realignments on one path, and on the other part is uh, as a result of the challenge that we see in the country presently, a situation where Nigerians, you know, majority of Nigerians are not really satisfied, you know, many of which have lost so much confidence, you know, in the system, in trying to address their issues, economic issues, uh, um, uh, to be precise, in the country, you know, uh, there has been up and down issues uh, pertaining to the issue of the uh, monetary policies, you know, uh, try and errors in different uh, sides of making the economy to structure. There's no proper blueprint, uh, you know, economic vision for the country. And I think um, that is what is giving birth to this uh, lack of satisfaction within um, people, uh, you know, around the country and within the political process as well. So I think uh, for me, and then, which I believe, I'm from the streets also. I know what is happening. I know what people are saying. I just came back from Katsina. I went to Sokoto. I went all over Nigeria, you know, just, uh, you know, in my usual tour with, uh, uh, with colleagues and friends. And to be very sincere, the sense of uh, not uh, being satisfied satisfied with what is happening in the countries there. So I think that is the essence uh, of uh, the um, alignments and political realignments and also, you know, the dissatisfaction within the parties, just as I said earlier. So I think that is just the issue. And this happens in history. You know, if you look at Nigerian history, the issue of ideology, as um, my, your, our guest in the other part has said, also is part of it. You know, it's all about political power. But I think we always concentrate, uh, you know, in the issue of capturing political power years and years and years. But we, we fail to look at the real thing that is happening in the country, the real major issues. Some people feel that they can govern the country more. Some people feel that it is slow. The development of the country economically is slow. In the 21st century, where um, uh, it's a global, you know, uh, we have uh, is a global economy that is run by ideas and information. You know, um, the system is very slow in providing solutions and ideas to checkmate or to find solutions to problems that Nigerians are facing presently. And I think that is the issue. The issue of precision. So, and that is why I think there is a, a cry on an alternative to the existing political parties that are there. The PDP has tried theirs. They, they had their own challenges. The APC came in and said they are going to provide change. It's not there. I, I think I'm, Another I'm, political I'm excited. I'm excited you're seeing it uh, this way because uh, uh, for Ken, he says it the other way. He thinks that in all of those uh, uh, disaffection which you just highlighted is still very much unnecessary for us to have all of these uh, uh, talk uh, about having a new party. Uh, by the way, apologies there. I'm supposed to also have uh, with you there in the studios uh, Professor Medano. I'm hoping he joins us before the end of the program. Uh, Nuhuata. Now, coming back to you, Ken, he says, well, looking at the, dis the dissatisfaction by these are uh, different groups, political mm. groups, whether you like it or not, these are wits and uh, camps that you really can't uh, uh, toy with in our polity. And he's talking about uh, the, those other factions which you also highlighted, and he's also mm. talking about one key thing which you pointed to, and it has to do with ideologies. Do we have them as presently, uh, you know, presently with uh, the political parties? So, for instance, your party. <coughs> uh, tell us the ideology of the PDP. You know, most people don't even know what the ideology of the PDP is. We've, uh, I think years ago we dwelt with that extensively on the same program. That's like three, four years ago. Most people don't know that the, the ideology of PDP is, is to the right, a little to the right. Because if you look at uh, the British system of, of uh, politics, you have to the left, extreme to the left, and extreme to the right. So you have the Labour Party and you have the Conservative Party. 
And in America, you have the Democrats and you have the Republicans. And when you believe, you, you, you see, in, in, in American system of government, Texas would always go Republican because most Texans are seen to be Republicans. And California would always go the Democrats. That was why Trump did not even bother to go and campaign in California. And Clinton did not bother to go and campaign in Texas. But you see, what we do here is that we, we lack political ideology. We, don't, we, don't, we are not sticking to what we believe. For me, I started as a progressive with the Alliance of Democracy. And if you notice, I mean, I'm, I've been in PDP for years now. I served as a commissioner under the PDP government in Delta State. But I have had this progressive uh, thing in me that makes it impossible for people to see me. I might not be judging myself from the average way they will see a politician from the PDP stop, which is very bad, because there's always this impression vice versa. Why am I saying that? I'm using that as an example because there is no ideology among those who are in this party. If you ask 75% of members of each of the political parties, let me not say only my party, PDP, they don't know what the ideology is. They don't know what the party stands for. They don't know the social uh, responsibilities that the party is supposed to carry out. They don't know what is the agenda or the program for the party as itself. What they know is that if I'm joining Mr. A and he's, he's gone in for this office during the primaries, it is the agenda he brings. That is what I believe in and not what the party stands for. And so it is very easy for you to now find political prostitutes who can just jump ship from uh, uh, PDP, uh, so to say, to the APC because the PDP is no more in government. They don't even want to say, I mean, at the time, Oyego said that, look, we should, we should stay, but I mean, I was very embarrassed when he made that statement. And he was spot on when he said, look, members of the PDP should stay back for, for now, because at that point in time, everybody was well, eager to well, just well, leave. We'll explore that more further when yes. we come back, especially uh, looking at the reasons, who to blame when we talk about lack of ideologies in uh, the political parties as we have them today. That'll be when we return.